Today we're going to be making a harpoon out of bone using primitive tools. And behind the eyeball is a nice globule of fat. Oh man, there's fish in there. I just gotta figure out a way to get them. Well, it shouldn't be too surprising to find a couple bones laying out in the woods. The question is, what can I do with these? And I think I already have the answer. I uh, saw some fish swimming on the creek over there, but you can't just, you know, grab a fish with your bare hands. You know, unless you're uh, some kind of primitive survival expert, which I'm not, clearly. So, let's take these bones and turn them into something that I can use to get the fish. Hmm, maybe something like a bone harpoon? I think so. Another interesting thing is I found some scat, probably from a coyote. They've been rampant through here, grabbing all the small game they possibly can. Now this looks to be from a fairly large animal. That looks like the femur bone's been cracked in half and animals probably grabbed what's in there. You can see it's nice and hollow now. And uh, this looks like a scapula and there's actually little bits of meat left on it still. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, some little pieces of muscle fiber. So this is a fresh kill from the winter. Interesting. But it'll serve my purpose real well. When you're picking your wood, always make sure it's hard firm and straight. It's going to go a lot further.
I'm just fire hardening it now. That heat will take all the moisture out of the wood and make it solid, rock solid. I want to make it solid before I put the bone in. I've got some sinew. The sinew I'll chew up, uh, soften in my mouth, and then I'll wrap it. But if I don't harden it first, then it won't be solid. Uh, the alternative to it is just to air dry it for a fairly long length of time. Uh, but fire hardening, it's a chemical process. It adds a lot more rigidity to the wood. Uh, and also it gives me a chance to straighten out the wood as I'm, you know, as I'm drying it, I can bend it and it'll hold that shape. The same, um, same mechanism is used when you make primitive arrows. You can straighten them as you dry them and fire harden them. You got a nice tight squeeze in there. Ooh, it's hot. Okay, so we got to let that cool down first. While it's cooling, we can work on the sinew. So, get some elk sinew. Right here, elk sinew. So basically that's the tendon of an animal. And that's pretty easy to collect. Once you're uh, skinning, butchering your animal, you often have silver skin on the backside of the muscle fibers. And you don't eat that because it's tendon. It's very tough material. It's basically what binds the muscle fibers to bone. So to soften this up, this has basically just been air dried. You scrape all the muscle tissue off so it doesn't spoil. We're going to chew it. And our saliva is going to soften it. And this is exactly what primitive people would have done. Who knows how they figured it out? But they did, and they're much better for it. We're going to soften this up, and then we're going to apply it to our spear. Wrap it up, and then we're going to let it dry. I've also got one other thing, and that's pine pitch. This is made from pine sap, and beeswax, and ash. Mix it together. Okay, so we got a nice big gob of it on there. It should slide on. Slider in there. Just like so. And a good solid fit. Just gonna smooth it in there. I fill the gaps up. There we go. I'm just gonna add a little bit more down in the crotch here just to fill that up. There we go, just jamming it in there as deep as I can get. Just jam your right into the wood. Just jam it in there. There we go. Okay, so, ah, uh, and you. Now nice and pliable. So we gotta get it back into the individual fibers so that we can start to wrap it. Thankfully it's very strong because it takes on so many forces when you use your muscle. You wouldn't want it to break on you. So we're just going to wrap that as tight as we can without breaking anything. And when this dries, it's going to dry solid, rock solid. Alright, I've got a whole nother piece to chew on. Oh. Cutting in my throat. So there we go. There's our finished product. 
I think it would take a fish. What do you think? Deadly. Deadly. All right, guys, harpoon in hand. Let's go see if this sucker works. Uh, I've got uh, an eye on a couple fish over in the creek there. Let's, uh, let's spear them up and turn them into food. So obviously guys, the harpoon, the bone harpoon is proof of concept. I can't legally uh, spear fish with a harpoon. It's completely illegal. Well, there's one exception to that rule and that's the sucker run. So my hope is I'll actually get to try that spear for real in a river on suckers. All right, so let's cook this uh, brook trout up. I've got some dogwood. And what I'm going to do is make a little fish basket. So what I've started here, let's get a little bit closer here and show you. So all I've done was taken a dogwood tree that's split in three, <clears throat> which was a great convenience to me. And I'm going to weave in more so that I can make a really complete fish basket that I can hang that fish over the coal. So I'm going one over, one over, one under. And that will weave ourselves a nice basket. So one over, one under, and I'll continue that all the way through. There we go. We've got ourselves a nice fish basket. So we're just going to drop the fish on top and we can hang it over the fire. All right guys, I'm gonna keep picking away at this fish. Thanks for joining me. Um, as always, subscribe or not, I don't care. Hey guys, if you guys wanna be notified, hit that bell icon and select, I wanna be notified. Otherwise, YouTube does not notify you. That's a fact. Check that fish out. It's perfectly smoked and I did a great job of deboning it too, so I can eat this whole. And I'm starving. This is all I've eaten all day. When I do my survival challenges, I want to put myself in the same situation I would be if I was actually doing it. I want to be hungry. Oh man, this is such a good fish. I love smoking fish. I've been out here a long time. It's getting dark out. Well, I'm going to eat this up and then I'm going to go home to my family and see how they're doing, see how their day went. Oh, I love fish like this. So good. All right, guys, I want to give credit where credit's due. The materials supplied for this video were provided by Vision Quest Outdoors, Jay Valenti. He uh, provided me with the bone 
uh, harpoon. He had hand carved that by himself uh, using primitive tools. I think he used a cow bone, so I actually didn't use the bones I found in the woods. But uh, in the effort of full disclosure, I thought you guys would know. And I also want to give credit to Jay for all the hard work he's done. He's provided me with a lot of the primitive tools I've been using. Um, this hand carved, handmade, I should say, uh, knife. He's also supplied me with the axe I used in this video, the stone axe. And uh, he's also like, he gave me the sinew. He gave me, like I said, the harpoon and he gave me the pine pitch. So with all, without all of those uh, things and those materials, I couldn't have possibly filmed this video. So I do want to shout out to uh, Jay. Uh, Valenti of Vision Quest Outdoors. Go uh, check out his channel. I believe he's going to do a reboot on the channel and get his uh, his things going. He's planning on doing all sorts of things, all sorts of interesting things as far as like primitive uh, builds. So that'll be uh, you know worth your while to check out. So anyway, shout out to Jay. Thank you very much for helping me build these, to build my channel, and helping me edu help educate me about uh, primitive skills. So. You know, without without guys like you who are out there making, doing the pioneering work, there's no way I could have done it. So thanks, Jay, uh, and, and everybody on my channel, go check them out. And behind the eyeball is a nice globule of fat. Suck it out, spit it out. The brain. The whole thing. Alright guys, cheers.